I'm not sure that there's one challenge bigger than the other. I mean, we tackle issues uh, day by day. Uh, I think you have to be, uh, I guess, alert to recognize this, you know, the issues as it happens. Whenever somebody uh, calls me or gets a hold of one of our staff for an issue, that is the person is their number one priority. So it's very important. I've been self-employed, you know, a good portion of my, of my working life. You do go some good times and you go through some bad times. And, you know, the bad times sometimes uh, you worry about how you make the paycheck for your employees and you might not be able to go uh, shopping uh, for, uh, for your family. Uh, and, and, that's, and I think that teaches us that some of those hard time, uh, I guess, uh, the good things in life that we've, uh, you know, that one uh, needs to experience. I honestly say, I can say I've been there. Uh, you know, uh, I've had years where, you know, uh, uh, through circumstances beyond our control, whether it's weather related, economy related, uh, the times are tough. I remember the days of 20% interest rates. And, you know, when I was in the wholesale business, and uh, my margins were 10%. So any economist will tell you that when you're paying 20% uh, money you borrow, you only make 10% interest. Uh, but what do you do? I mean, we survive that. Uh, you know, you work harder, you dig in deeper, and uh, you know, being in politics is no different. I keep on talking about health and education. I mean, there are two planks. I mean, it's, it's almost like a, a motherhood and apple pie. I mean, the fact that uh, you know that we want to be one of the improve our education system because we know a better educated. Uh, society tomorrow, it, it's, it's better for all of us. Uh, so when we tackle the issue about smaller class sizes, the investment that we make uh, uh, with post-secondary education to make sure that we have the type of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, people that are ready to tackle the workforce. And of course, you know, the, and I mentioned before, I keep on referring to the healthcare. I mean, when we brought MRIs to the North uh, Carolina Hospital, the Belleville Hospital, the CAT scan, uh, at the Trent Memorial Hospital, or the family health team, you know, uh, when I, family health teams, when I talk about that, I mean, that's something that I started, uh, you know, right in the municipality where I lived in Brighton, and being able to be in government, and be able to deliver exactly what they build, and it's a model for the province of Ontario. Lou actually was a blind date. I'm Diane Renault, and I'm Lou's wife. We pulled up at my house, my girlfriend came in and got me. I got in the car, and I just said, how tall is he when he stands up? <laughs> Lou always wanted to move to the country, and uh, we moved to, he moved me to Pickering first, and when we moved to Pickering, it actually was a country. It wasn't built up like it is now. And then he just gradually moved us even farther. This place was up for sale, and he decided he wanted to buy it. I told him no, but we're here 27 years later. Today she'll tell you she doesn't ever want to move out of Brighton. No. And I think um, Brighton is very lucky to get. My name is Betty Doucette, and uh, we met. We've known Lou and Diane for 33 years. We met in Pickering. Drive in, wasn't it? We met at a drive in when she was how many months pregnant? Oh, I have no idea. No, I can't remember. About six <laughs> with, with Mark, her son Mark. Well, Lou and I have been childhood friends for. Um, since the early 60s, we met uh, in high school, early start of high school. Never expected him to be in politics. But you know what? He's good at it. He really thoroughly enjoys what he's doing, and maybe that's what makes him good at it. Well, you know, the one thing that most people really don't realize about Lou is uh, he's got quite a capacity upstairs. Uh, he can handle uh, more than one thing at a time. He was always known as a pretty good student. Uh, his uh, mathematics skills uh, earned him quite a bit of a, a good reputation at the school. So, I mean, he, I wasn't too much of a surprise that he's able to, to, to handle the, the public life because he's well-liked, uh, he does what he says, and, and uh, he's a pretty straightforward individual. Lou, he's, he's very well respected by everyone. And from the minute I actually met him, not that they surprised me, but just he's really always been respected. He was a well-liked student, uh, not only with the with the student body, but also with the uh, with the teachers. He had a, an uncanny way of making friends everywhere he went. Um, I think the most thing that uh, the, probably the precedent thing that people liked about him is the fact that he is a uh, uh, he's, what he when he said something he did it. I think that's it. You know, he's just got that personality that people take to him and. You know, 
Well, family is always important. It's the number one thing. Uh, and sometimes we tend to forget that. I'll be the first one to admit it. But uh, uh, family is number one, and I'm so uh, happy that. Uh, I mean, I had a very close family life. Uh, one, two, three, I only had one sister. I only had one, one sister, two, but uh, we were very, very close. I was I was fortunate enough to 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 be part of that family. Uh, it was sort of like an adopted family for me because we were always spend all our times over there right, with each other's homes. Um, as any immigrant coming to, to to Canada, you you try to cling on to something, and what you what you cling on to is your family. Uh, great family values were created for Lou at that time. Uh, as a child, ra being raised by his dad, who was also a hardworking man, his mother, uh, who, who made a great home and fantastic cook. Um, she was, uh, it, it, was a, it was sort of the nucleus of, of what you, wh how you grow yourself and you focus back on the family and, and, and view it that way. It's a great, um, it was a great home uh, for Lou and for any immigrant in those days. Uh, Italian immigr immigrants uh, have done very well, extremely well all around and uh, it's the hard work, it's the, it's the family values, and you can see it with Lou in terms of how he acts with his uh, grandchildren uh, and, and, and his own children. I'm Lou Rinaldi and I'm looking for your support on October 5th.